Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Saturday night in Hollywood, so let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. It's almost Halloween, man. Oh. Tonight it's Halloween babble. I was like, Ralph's having a stroke. And I'm like Batman. I like to be prepared for every eventuality, but you having a stroke in the opening of the show? I was never prepared for it. By the time we get to leave, now it's time for yes. shout out. <laughs> <laughs> You're hosting with Dick Clark. You can go to hell for that kind of shit. No, no. No. Too soon. Stop. Uh, it. it is. It's right. It's right before Halloween. Bleh. Oh. Bleh. Switch to the gay ghost. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where? It's so weird. It's so weird. Boo. <laughs> Funny you should say that because I apologize in advance. I was going to come tonight in costume. I know, but I ran out of time. I was prepping the show. I, I take all day Saturday to kind of compile the show. And I take all day Saturday to smoke weed. Right. <laughs> Those are our jobs preparing for the show. And uh, we've moved the show up to 8 o'clock now. We're in prime time. So I'm, I'm still off in my time management. So I, ha I got the show prepped, and I started to put together the finishing touches for the gay ghost costume, which was a, uh, a cheesy-ass store-bought ghost costume <laughs> with a, a mask and like a, you know, usually like a sheet, basically. You know? right. And I said, well, that's the ghost part. So then I was putting together a T-shirt that I was going to put over it with the words, I enjoy penis on them. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the T-shirt earlier today, and I got those iron-on letters... And those fuckers don't work. Don't buy those iron-on letters. I was ironing the shit out of those letters. It was like I had 45 minutes of ironing, and they were just falling off. They weren't sticking. But I finally got down to, I enjoy. And I said, that won't make any sense if I put on an I enjoy t-shirt over the ghost. That'd be so positive, though, man. <laughs> like, if I encountered somebody who's just like, I enjoy, like, I wouldn't even be like, I'm not even going to ask you what, buddy. I understand what you mean. I enjoy, too. But that would be like a Buddhist ghost. It wouldn't be a gay ghost. <laughs> so I said, I can't just go out there in a cheesy ghost costume. I can eat the whole thing, you know? So anyway, I, I ran out of time. It was like 7.35, and I'm ironing. I said, fuck this. And I just grabbed my shit and ran out the door. So I apologize. But imagine me looking like a ghost with I enjoy penis on my chest, <laughs> if you will. If I you came in costume as per usual. Yes, you did. Every week you come in costume. Uh, I know we have some costumes out there tonight, too, right? There would be folks in costume. <laughs> wow, look at Thor. Holy shit, there's an onomatopoeia up there, yeah, man. Yeah, wow. Oh, that's fucking dope. For those that don't know, that was a character that I put in Green Arrow and in Batman. That is fucked up. We'll be doing cacophony later on tonight, actually. That's right. Yeah. We'll be doing cacophony, man. Oh, my God. That's so cool. Look at, look at the mighty Thor up there. Have you seen the mighty Thor? Yeah, fuck Thor. Huh? He wasn't in my book, right, man. Right this up. motherfucker was in my book. All right, yes. It's very impressive. Look at Thor. That's an where, impressive where, where? costume. Oh, right shit. There. Yeah. yeah, thou doth very good. Yeah. And Black Widow next to him. Wow. We got the Where's penguin the over here. Oh, shit. Jesus. That doesn't look like much costume, sir. That looks like mostly you. <laughs> Nothing personal, but... I'll be honest, man. I thought it was a mirror suspended from the ceiling. <laughs> This is fucking amazing. People are dressed up. I'm stoned. I'm like, it's the penguin. It's the words. It's your wettest dreams come true is what it is. Well, thanks, everyone, who went to the effort that I didn't tonight and uh, <laughs> actually came in costume. Real quickly, tonight's show is sponsored. We have a sponsor tonight, a brand new sponsor, the Dave Woo! School. Uh, for those of you who are true geeks, you might know what the Dave School is already because they've had some amazing videos and films they've already put out. But the Dave School is the digital animation and visual effects school, and they work out of the back lot at Universal Studios in Orlando, and they've got a one-year training program in computer animation and visual effects that they wanted everyone to know about. So you can go to daveschool.com for more information if you're looking to get into... Uh, the movies or television as a or visual... Or just cartoons, man. Which visual we, effects we artists. We pick up a few of them. We've, we've found some really great 
uh, amateur animators, uh, cartoonists that we put up on our YouTube channel on CSMOD. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. So you can go to the Dave School, man. We'll hire you. You don't even have to wait to get out of school. We'll start throwing you bones, man, as long as you take audio from one of our podcasts and make cartoons of us. Yes. <laughs> so we can rape your talent and make money off of you. <laughs> It's not called rape, it's called exploitation. Okay. Uh, the Dave School people, by the way, they're the ones who did that Batman New Times, the Batman Lego video. Oh, the Have you Lego ever seen that? Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's the Joker. Adam West is Batman. Dick Van Dyke is Commissioner Gordon. I love that video. Dick Van Dyke was Commissioner Gordon? Yeah. What'd that sound like? Oi, Mary Poppins. <laughs> I'm Commissioner Gordon. It's a jolly holiday with Batman. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't sound like Keep that Keep going, at all. man. I was so into the musical, I was about to back you up. All right, we want to start off the show as we do every week by giving some shout-outs to people who have come particularly long distances or are celebrating special occasions with us here tonight. It's a segment we call appropriately Shout-Outs. It's a shout-out with Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah. Get your cock out. Get your cock out. We've been on the road for so long with places that had no wire Wireless mics. for that part of the show. That's yeah. my biggest contribution to the show. Yeah. Without the wire, I couldn't swing a cock over my face, man. And I was like, who am I? not on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, for some reason, I, again, we get a ton of shout-outs, and we apologize that we can't get to all of you. We appreciate your writing in at hbopodcast at aol.com. But um, for some reason, we have an inordinate amount of Australians here this evening. We're, Fucking hey, man. Diplomatic immunity. That's the wrong country. Is there some sort of Australia convention in town or something? You guys have a... Koala Fest, bitch. Is there a... Oh, Koala Fest. I it's forgot all about the, Koala it's Fest. all the Australian gay bears get together in Los Angeles. Eat eucalyptus. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it. Eucalyptus. <laughs> I thought maybe there was a, a, a boomerang trade show in town or something, and they're all here. Know. Um, so uh, a lot of Australians here tonight, including Dale from Wollongong, Australia. Hey, Dale. Oi! Oi, oi, oi! Suddenly it's a frat party. I don't know. <laughs> don't know what happened. Uh, Dale writes, I'm in from Wollongong, Australia, and I'll be attending the show. Unfortunately, my wife Kathleen couldn't get time off to join me at the conference. It is Qualifest. You're right. I told you, man. And he didn't bring a girl, as you can see. <laughs> yes. I recently made her sit through HBO during some long road trips. Uh, she has come to admit that HBO has now grown on her, but still has an issue on how often Kevin talks about his masturbation routine. <laughs> yeah, get in line, Kathleen. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think I talk about it all that much, but now that you Really? You don't? Up, <laughs> last night I tugged one out, something fucking all fierce, right. man. And you know was... anyone can do it, you know? It's not a skill. We all, we all do it, Kevin. I celebrate myself, Ralph. <laughs> I'm a little miracle. My mother told me that from birth. <laughs> Everything that I do and produce is wonderful. So, so yeah, I tug one out. After I drop one in my old lady, man. So you'd imagine I'd fucking be like, I'm done and shit. But like a teenager, I was like, I'm going to go down to my office. Crack, crack, crack. <laughs> so I don't know what she's talking about in the letter, man. Is that the all. actual sound your ejaculate makes? <laughs> totally. Crack, crack, crack. <laughs> yeah. I don't go soft, man. 42-year-old man. Crack, crack, crack. I got to hurry up, you know? Got a wife down the hallway, get downstairs. <laughs> Does your penis have a knuckle? <laughs> <laughs> what no, are you but, cracking? No, but there is a ratchet affair. <laughs> uh, uh, Dale continues, Kathleen's favorite impression of yours is the gay ghost. So I would love to give her a shout out in that voice saying that I'm working hard the whole time and I'm promising that I won't be giving or receiving any massages from John Travolta. This would have been so much funnier if I was dressed as the gay ghost, Dale. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what? Where? <laughs> Dale blew me. <laughs> so weird. He asked not to talk about it, but he blew me. <laughs> Boo. Uh, Brian, Justin, and Polo. Are you guys in the house? You fucking kidding me. Took the time to write and couldn't show up. Justin, Polo, and Brian. Calling Justin, Polo, and Brian one more time. You'll take it? <laughs> Why, hello. 
I'm bummed they're not here because they asked us to berate their friend who couldn't show up. <laughs> The balls of these guys. I think Alanis Morissette wrote a song about this guy. Isn't it ironic? Yes. Um, could, could you shut up? Could you please? <laughs> could you please berate our friend? Wait, wait, Andy? wait. Who is filing? Me or him? Uh, Ralph. Uh. So He's weird. got a point, Ralph. <laughs> Had it been you? <laughs> shut the fuck. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Double tap. Could you please berate our friend Andrew for not showing up as Andrew Dice Clay? <laughs> oh! Unbelievable! <laughs> These guys say they're not coming and then the guy can be saved. Hickory dickory dock. These kids could suck my cock. Oh! Oh! Unbelievable! <laughs> I was watching The Daily Show this week. I think it was this week, and Jon Stewart also lapsed into Andrew Dice Clay for a moment. I think everybody secretly likes to do Andrew Dice Clay. When you go hardcore New Yorker, he just sort of is the go-to guy. Yeah. guy yeah. Uh, Michael, Danny, and Jason, are you guys here? <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear. Wow, that sounded so fucking like pre-rehearsed and shit. <laughs> like you said it, and they were like, one, two, three. <laughs> 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 Just like that. <laughs> One more time, boys, with feeling. One, a two, a three. <laughs> it's like they're doing the wave. <laughs> <laughs> we should get a pre-recorded woo, so when fuckers don't show up, we can just play it. It'll sound like they're here. Play that, the weakest woo ever. <laughs> yeah, man. We'll play. That'll be our. That'll be our go-to woo. <laughs> All right. One more time. Jason, it's like, it's like uh, I got a fucking, I got seventy five dollars back on my tax return. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a celebration, but not too hardcore, right. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an orderly celebration. <laughs> I dropped a Twinkie, but it hit my knee before the floor, so I could still eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well mannered celebration. Yeah, 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 appropriate level yes. of celebration. Uh, Jason writes, I've been listening to the podcast since episode one and always wanted to attend one of your live shows. Short, certainly after you st shortly after you started the podcast, I was injured at work and needed to have a cervical spine fusion done to release the pressure from my two cervical discs bulging in my spinal cord. After surgery, I was in a neck brace for three months. Uh, the only exercise hold I was allowed... Hold on, hold on, man. Fucking no sad Hulk music on this shit? <laughs> there we go. These two don't go together, man. <laughs> you got to bring the woo way right down, way down. Ready on the count of three. Yeah, like that. One, two, three. <laughs> there we go. Sad Hulk woo. Sad Hulk it up, man. Right. After the surgery, I was in a neck brace for three months. The only exercise my surgeon has allowed over the past year and a half is to go on walks. The two of you became my Hollywood helpers and were, and still are, with me on many of my walks. I can't thank you enough for all the laughs during a very difficult time in my life. Happy to be here tonight with my friends Michael and Danny. Now give that penis a sandwich. Right on, man. Glad you're feeling better, Jason. Glad you can muster a woo with that whole neck thing. And don't feel too bad, man. I didn't even have anything like that happen to me. And walking is the most exercise I've done all year as well. Yeah. So you and me are like this. And not boy. a lot of it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't see you walking a you lot. You know what? Fuck you, Ralph. I'll walk with you. <laughs> Sorry, I pressed the wrong button, yeah. Ralph. Uh, You're looking for the woo button, <laughs> Let me just you? try that yeah. again. Yeah. Fuck you, Ralph. <laughs> there you go. They're so close together, that's the problem. Yeah. Need better labels on those buttons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Uh, Daniel, Cynthia, Danny, and Jenny. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Uh, coming to the show this weekend to celebrate my 30th birthday, Daniel writes. I'm bringing along my sister Cynthia, my brother-in-law Danny, and my cousin Jenny. My original plan was to celebrate my 28th birthday at the old Smod Castle, but unfortunately I was unable to attend. I had a hemorrhagic stroke three weeks before. What is this, fucking Lourdes? 
We're healing nice. the sick here. Nice pull, man. <laughs> Holy shit, the Catholic in me love that, man. <laughs> We're in the that, wrong that, business. That is an appropriate level woo. We're in the wrong My business. mother would woo for that joke. We She's should like, be faith healers. We're, make, we're healing the sick with this show. Next up, humple, uh, fucking cripples and humpbacks. <laughs> I had a hemorrhagic stroke three weeks before. I spent 10 days in a coma. Jesus. And when I came to, Daniel writes, I was unable to move my right side. They told me I would never walk again. That was the day I committed myself to walking again. Who I, are these brave fucking people, man? Because Daniel, doctor, right over there. I guess. Hello. If a doctor said to me, give it up for the man. I'll walk with you! <laughs> this fucker will walk with anybody. <laughs> if a You're doctor, the loneliest walker I've ever met. <laughs> if it, or the friendliest, Ralph. If a doctor told me you're never going to walk again, I would immediately be like, right on, turn the TV on. <laughs> That'd be the greatest <laughs> news you ever heard. Bring me a tray of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, man. Just keep putting them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Daniel writes, uh, I committed myself to walking again. I told myself that one day I would walk in to see this podcast. Today is that day. Well done, man. Welcome, Daniel. That's awesome. I would love to hear a pep talk from Sean Connery. Really? You couldn't have picked a more sympathetic character of mine to give you a pep talk? He's very motivational. Yes, he is. Your right side is fucking lazy. It's about time your fucking right side got off his ass and started walking again. Your left side was dancing a fucking jig and your right side was boring. Finally, your right side woke up. I hope your left side kicks its ass later tonight. Fucking right side. There you go, there's your pep talk from Sean Connery. Congrats, man, congrats. That's one of those stories I told, they said I wouldn't walk, I said fuck them, I will walk someday. And then he proves them wrong and walks. And says walking into here was his motivation. Yes. You need more of, to your life, sir, <laughs> to use this as your motivation. But maybe I'm going maybe. to walk into a small comedy club someday <laughs> uh, near a big theme park, and gonna, I'm going to buy a drink, listen to a drunk and a stone guy tell ass fucking jokes. So there, Doc, you can't keep me down. You're looking at it the wrong way, <laughs> sir. Story of my life, son. <laughs> this is like a third act in a fucking TV movie, man. The motherfucker shows up here at the club under his own steam, walks in and listens to you tell a joke credits. That's fucking amazing. Unless it's the second act in a fucking horror movie <laughs> and in the third act shit goes wrong. Yeah. In which case, let's enjoy the fucking second act while we're here, man. Like maybe there's a third, uh, a third act villain like Loki or something like that with the pokey yeah. stick. What strain you smoking tonight? <laughs> OG Chemex, it's called. OG Chemex? Yeah, it's got on the label a little picture of Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker. It does it. <laughs> does it say do not op operate microphones while under the use of this medicine? It's weed so good you feel like you got a hand up your ass. <laughs> it's Muppet weed. Yes. Uh, I know. How about? <laughs> How about uh, Reese and Ness from Australia? You guys here? Am I saying that properly, Reese? It always confuses me, that, that fucking spelling. R-H-Y-S, that Reese. You know, the Brits and the Australians use that. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's rice, Reese, Reese. I don't know what it is. It's Reese. It's rice? It's Reese. You two want to duke it out? You want to settle this after the show? Uh, Ness writes, we flew in from Sydney this morning. Wow. That's a long flight. You must be exhausted. You're in drunk. Well, <laughs> you're Australian. That goes without saying, madam. This was a surprise to my wonderful husband for our second wedding anniversary early birthday present. What, you just threw him on a plane? He didn't know where he was going? That's called kidnapping in this country. Thanks to your love of anal, I've had to explain to my mom what a rusty wagon wheel is, writes Ness. Followed by her response, D 
did you know that there's a drug to loosen your butthole? <laughs> and then my mom typing, gay man's drug to loosen your butthole into Google. <laughs> You're the coolest mom in the world. What is that drug? Stop it. <laughs> do, you, do you know what it is? Is there really a drug? Yeah, I didn't think there, there is. What is, is it called Spanish fly? <laughs> is it called poppers? Yeah. That's it? Poppers is, uh, it's, it's basically head cleaner for a VCR. <laughs> yeah, there, there are no gay men in the audience, for God's sakes. You've never heard of Poppers? I've heard of them, but I didn't poppers know Poppers comes in a little cleaners. bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. and originally it was a head cleaner for a VCR. Back in the days when we used to use VCRs. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I think DJ James Sphincter's a little loose right now. <laughs> but they found if you sniffed it... Yeah. You don't actually snort the liquid. If you sniff the fumes, it uh, cuts off the <laughs> circulation to your brain. It replaces oxygen in your brain, and it makes you fucking high. And apparently, it loosens your asshole. For how long does it make you high, and for how long does it loosen your asshole? It, it wears off very quickly. You're high for, I don't know, 30 seconds So you got to get in pop. and get the fuck out on that one, right? But it loosens your asshole for about five years. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You just walk around just shit falling out of you everywhere you go. Um, Ralph, could you please welcome Reese in your Ed Wynn voice and wish him a happy anniversary and apologize for the lack of anal? Wait a minute, there's poppers. Why aren't you giving up the anal? Someone get her some poppers so he can have her ass. Look at how adorable she is. Like, no, no. No, he won't go waltzing Matilda back there. I don't take it into didgeridoo. Ness adds, when your pussy's this tight, you don't need to use the death tunnel. <laughs> death tunnel? What the fuck you have hidden up there? Razor blades? <laughs> Sounds like a Saw movie. I would imagine that's what someone who doesn't wanna, want anal calls it. Like, yeah, you can put it up my death tunnel if you want, but then I do it to you next. If you try to fuck me there, I will kill you. That's why it's called the death tunnel. Thanks for the laughs, uh, education, and awkward positions you've put me in for the past two years, Ness. All right. Uh, Edwin to, to Reese to welcome him to the show. Oh, my goodness. Here's what you do. Get your wife some poppers. And you stick them up her nose. And then you say, this is for putting me on a plane, bitch. She kidnapped the man. A little harsh punishment, don't you think? Especially Fits something he seems to enjoy. Fits the crime. I see, I see. Saul from London. Saul, are you here all the way from London? Yeah. Where are you, brother? Hey, man. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Uh, back in the country for a few months, since now I live in London, doing all the touristy things, I decided to see the musical The Book of Mormon. Yeah. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Don't fuck the baby. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Kevin's stupid little voice out of my head singing Don't Fuck the Baby the whole fucking show. <laughs> You should really let me pre-read this shit, man. No way. You're the greatest straight man in the business. <laughs> I'd really appreciate Kevin telling me what else to do in Los Angeles in his creepy, sexy voice. Oh, Kevin. Oh, what's his name? Saul. Saul. You want to go to a place called Merrick's on Santa Monica Boulevard. Just off it, man. It's right off the corner. It's behind a place called Basics. It is a Mexican restaurant that had... <laughs> really? It's a restaurant recommendation? That's what you're giving them? Yeah, what else? <laughs> they serve nachos. Well, that is sexy, big fella. It also has, if I may jump out of the sexy voice, the best fucking music of any place you go eat in Los Angeles, man. It was, it's pretty gay down there. Uh, I love it. It's fantastic. I go in there. <laughs> fuck you. I feel comfortable. What a coincidence. <laughs> it's not a coincidence, bro. <laughs> um, but I take my kid there. It's fantastic. It's the only place you could take. Like She's a 13-year-old girl. She's starting to develop and shit like that. Every once in a while, people look at me like, ew, he's traded up and got a younger wife. You know, <laughs> I'm like, this is my fucking kid. But when uh, you go to eat there, man, ain't nobody looking at the kid. They're all looking at me. Oh, I see. <laughs> and I'm just like, I always fucking like, oh, can you pass me the menu? <laughs> it's the only place that I can pull that, like, here's the ticket to the gun show. Right. You know? 
where I get a few They're good looks. They're bear friendly, is that what you're saying? Very bear friendly. Yeah. But it's also a great restaurant, man. They have fantastic queso and blackened chicken tacos. Anyway, that's what I would do if I was here from London. <laughs> Imagine all that in a sexy voice. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, Amanda Hallman. Amanda, are you here? Where's Amanda? Upstairs? Yeah. Second, second row. Hello, Amanda. Huge fan. I've been for years. I was devastated when you got married, Ralph. Wow, man. Trust me, so was my wife. <laughs> Two years ago, I took my brother to see HBO for his birthday, and we loved it. We're coming again for his birthday. His name is Jason, but for years, we've just called each other stupid. I'd be thrilled if David Bowie could sing happy birthday to my brother, Stupid. <laughs> Thanks so much. Can't wait to see you again. Garmy Strong, Amanda. Well, that's, with so much love between the two of you, how could I resist this request? Can we get a little bit of that, James? Happy birthday to you, Stupid. Happy birthday to you, Stupid. Happy birthday to you, Stupid. You're such a fucking idiot. Happy birthday to you, stupid. Happy birthday to you, stupid. Happy birthday from your sister. She's the one that calls you stupid. Happy birthday to you, stupid. Happy birthday to you, stupid. Happy birthday to you, stupid. It's your fucking stupid birthday. Happy birthday, man. Stupid. Did you just wipe your imaginary jism on me? It's cool. We're friends, man. My babies are all over you. <laughs> Had a familiar imaginary jism, by the way, would be a great band name. We gotta start a band. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are imaginary jism. Good night. <laughs> Woo! Imaginary jism gets all over you. <laughs> we also read out loud emails that we get from all around the world. Ain't no drag. Garmin's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. This first email starts, Ralph and Kev, I found this list while perusing... <laughs> Hold a second. <laughs> I found this list while perusing IMDB. You guys familiar with IMDB? The, uh, was it the... <laughs> no, Ralph, because we all just got here from 1989. Well, some people may not give a shit IMDb about... IMDB is like, there's like three temples on the internet. Fucking Google, Amazon, and the IMDB, at least in my house. Well, sure, because you're in the business, but some people may not know. It's where you go to look up movie people and their history and stuff like that. Uh, on and Playboy is a magazine with naked ladies Stop in it. it. <laughs> the one time I try to be fucking nice and helpful, and you're going to give me shit about it? Fine, go on. I found a list on there called Enemies of Modern Movies, and I thought you might like it. Thanks again for the free funny. And again, if you need an, uh, a Garmy base in Dallas... I'll bring the Jack and the Buds. C. Sands from Dallas writes this list. So I took a look at this list. It is very interesting. It's the 15, according to uh, Yahoo 7777. It's the guy who put the list together. Uh, these are uh, enemies of modern movies. People who always look for the bad stuff in modern movies. Persons who don't know the meaning of the word entertainment is the list. On the list of the top 15, Leonard Maltin is 15th on the list. Uh, Peter Travers of Rolling Stone, the movie critic for that magazine, is 12th. Ben Lyons is ninth. Jay Leno is eighth, which I thought was strange. He attacks movies. You know, maybe he's nice he about makes, everybody. Maybe because he makes jokes or something like that. Maybe. That counts. But I've never seen him badmouth anyone, anybody's movie uh, when they got him on the show. He's always like, <laughs> 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 he was great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> One more time. He was, <laughs> 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 was great. <laughs> fucking hate Jay Leno. No. I fucking no. hate him. He's a good fucking He's dude. He's such a pussy. Such a marshmallow. He's not a pussy. He's a nice guy, man. He just doesn't have the salt that you got. So nice. <laughs> That's all I hear when I watch that show. <laughs> Matt Stone and Trey Parker are seven and six. Seth MacFarlane. They make fifth. fun of movies on the show? Yeah. 
Seth MacFarlane was fifth. Because he makes fun of movies? Yep. Richard Roper, the critic, fourth. Roger Ebert was second. Can we throw up number one on the list? Uh, can we put it on the big screen soon? <laughs> the number one, number one enemy of modern movies, according to this guy, Yahoo 7777, is Ralph Garman. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm number one? I'm public enemy number one when it comes to movies? Are you shitting me? You gotta call your parents. <laughs> This is huge, dude. You beat out some fucking some players, It man. is the only time I'll ever be number one on any <laughs> list ever, so I guess I should enjoy it. But this guy, really, seriously, I'm number I'm the enemy of modern movies. I would agree. How dare you, sir? <laughs> I was chagrined by that, but kind of thrilled secretly. Uh, the next email comes from Matt in Australia. I'm from down under. I listen religiously. I have no job, no girlfriend, and live at home with my parents. Hmm. Oi. Apparently the same shit happens in Australia, happens in America. <laughs> I'm hoping you can keep the noose I have made hidden away by giving me a shout out on my birthday this weekend. <laughs> Someone thought that was hilarious. This guy's contemplating suicide. Uh. Must be an Australian thing. Much love from Matt in Australia. Could Kevin please wish me a happy birthday? I know he does a terrible Aussie accent, so maybe he can wish me the a birthday the size of a tangerine in his Alfred the Butler voice. That is how, whenever I'm hanging out with Scott Mosier, in order to get to the Michael Caine impression, we always go uh, to the line from The Dark Knight where he goes, the size of a tangerine. <laughs> So whenever we try to go to an Australian accent, we go there, and then people are always like, he's not Australian. He's Cockney. I know, but for some reason, it helps us get into it. Well, stuff. can you wish Matt a happy birthday, a birthday the size of a tangerine for him? Uh, yes. Uh, is he here or no? No, he's not. This is an email. Okay. <laughs> Everyone else is following along with the show. Excellent point, coming from the guy that just had to fucking try to explain the internet. Uh, this is for you, Matt. Once a jolly swagman. What's the fucking rest of the words? <laughs> we got some fucking Australians here. What is it? Thank you. Camped by a billabong under the shade of a coolabar tree. tree. Help me out. And he sang. And he sat and he sang as he watched his billaboil. Uh, won't you go waltzing, Matilda, with me? Help me out now. Everyone just sing along. You go waltzing, Matilda, waltzing, Matilda. Won't you go waltzing, Matilda, with me? So Matt's not here, and he shouldn't get this really cool song, but you made me, so now we are done. And there we go. <laughs> not to be picky, but he did ask for a birthday the size of a tangerine in your Alfred voice. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's his birthday. I'd like I to give him what he asked for. Totally. It's like yeah. a dude asking for a hand job. I'm like, stick it in my ass! <laughs> uh, he just wants your happy, Michael Caine I hope you have a, ha a birthday the size of a tangerine. There right? you go. Thank you so much. Uh, Charlie Kyleberg writes in from New York City, t-shirthell.com has a new t-shirt I think you guys should offer there where you do your show. I thought I'd share the shirt with you, and he did. He sent in a picture of this brand new T-shirt. It's available on tshirthell.com. You're familiar with the I Love New York logo, the I Heart New York. I Love New York. This is another option they have on there. This is <laughs> I Love It's New York versus I Love New York. The picture of our buddy John Lovitz with a big red face right there. That's adorable. We should man. sell those here. Quick story about the I Heart New York. I probably told it before, but I'll say it again. In Clerks 2, we had somebody in the dance scene wearing a T-shirt that said I Heart. NJ, we got uh, sued by the state of New York, who has trademarked and copyrighted I Heart Anything. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, so we had to pay a little bit of money after the fact and shit. Either that or digitally remove it from the movie. Wow. Yeah, and I fucked up. We also had inside, I think there was an I Heart Movies or something like that, and we had to digitally work with that. You should have got a new t-shirt to be worn in that scene, and it should have said, I fuck New York. It should have just a big <laughs> finger, a big middle finger on the t-shirt. Bet they haven't trademarked that. This wasn't too long after, you know, the tragic period of September 11th. Oh. So. <laughs> All right, they get a pass then. Yeah, I didn't want to get into it with them right about All then. All right, dude. you get a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Jeez. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> uh, Brandon Arnold writes, several weeks ago, I introduced my girlfriend Ashley to Hollywood Babylon. She immediately fell in love with your wonderful podcast. She's an idiot. <laughs> We have not missed an episode since she has started listening, and now I'm not even allowed to listen to an episode without her. Not well, that that's I, cute, man. Not that I mind much, because she is the Rachel Dawes to my Batman. The Katie that's Holmes one, she cute. says. <laughs> not Maggie Gyllenhaal, because who would want to fuck that? <laughs> He's got a point. Her husband. she got a husband. He must no, love this fucking is that. Boyfriend and girlfriend here, these two. Oh, I'm just saying in real life. Oh, Maggie Gyllenhaal's husband? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, an actor. Yeah. Yeah, vision's not good. <laughs> married to Stevie Wonder, I think, Steve. A lot of fucking quiet hostility in this room suddenly from the back. He's blind! Like he'd been waiting to say that for three years, man. Brandon Arnold here uh, adds, if Ashley were to die, I would become a bum for eight years and practice archery in my bedroom. <laughs> it's a Batman thing. Anyway, the only person Ashley loves more than me is Adam West. So it would be awesome if you, Ralph, as Adam West, could ask Ashley to marry me so she will hear this as we listen together. Get the fuck out of here, really? Yeah. Do you think this is for real? I do get the sense it's for real. All right, man. Fucking handle it gently. Ashley. <laughs> are you fucking shitting me? You're winging? You're going to wing this? You knew there was a fucking engagement and it's that you had to set up and you're like, fuck it, I'll wing it and shit? You should have written some shit down, man. Do you want to take 10 minutes? I'll take over for the show. You go write some... This is These people are tying their lives together and you're just going to be like, hello, old chum. I mean, you can... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, can I hear your Adam... <laughs> West again, please. <laughs> Hold the phone. Can I hear your Adam West impression again, please? I feel like I've gone too far. <laughs> I don't know if that was Adam West or B. Arthur. <laughs> Listen, this is how I feel about this. This guy wrote into a podcast to propose to his girlfriend. <laughs> Fair enough. He gets my what bad. he deserves. I've been hoisted on my own petard. <laughs> A man would just sit his girl down and say, will you marry me? He's asking a podcast to do his work for him. He a gets, podcasting legend. He Ralph. gets what he gets. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Your boyfriend, Brandon, would love to have your hand in marriage. Personally, I think it's too soon. Perhaps you two would like to take some time apart. <laughs> Date some other people and see if you're really meant for each other. If you love something, let it go. If it comes back, then you slide down the bat poles of matrimony together. Otherwise, fuck off. <laughs> you like it? Does that work? Well done. Thank you. And uh, this gentleman uh, did not leave his name. If you're going to write an email, you should identify yourself. But I did appreciate this uh, email he sent in. I hope Ralph is getting royalty checks for his likeness being used by these Halloween dolls I saw in the store this week. They look just like him. Can we throw up the picture of the, uh, the Halloween doll? <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a vampire of some kind. And yet it does look eerily like me. You throw a little leather jacket on it, man. Blah. <laughs> and uh, lastly, this email writes, Dear Ralph and Kevin, from Slax86 is his name. Well, that's awesome. I'm guessing that's not his actual name, but that's how he signed this. Slax86. Uh, that's, that's what I say whenever I go into a men's store. Can I get some Slax86? <laughs> The only way I can think of truly celebrating Halloween is by having Harrison Ford sing the Monster Mash. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> acapella? Once again, we're going to add this to my album. Uh, Ralph sings the hits in various <laughs> voices. Yeah, I'll sing it acapella. This is uh, Harrison Ford singing the Halloween classic, the Monster Mash. I was working on my land. <laughs> Late one night. My hand in here, he's like... No, I'm trying to look right in his eye. I'm trying to stay with 
in the line. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. They did the mash. It wasn't gravy, it was mash. They did the mash. He caught all in the fire. They did the mash. And then the monster mash. There you go. <laughs> All right, we got another email here, but uh, it's asking for a creepy clown voice, so um, that means it's creepy clown time. Creepy clown time? Creepy clown time. There we go. Now, we had two requests tonight. Now, I thought we had done one before, so I gave it a backup, but I'll let the crowd decide. Because uh, this guy asks, uh, I was listening to the Las Vegas show, and I was wondering what a John Travolta gay ghost creepy clown might sound like. We did that before, didn't we? Yeah. But it was Halloween, so I thought that was sort of appropriate. Now, the other one from Alan in Tennessee writes uh, simply, Bowie clown, Bowie clown, Bowie clown. <laughs> So I can redo Gay Ghost Clown, or I can do a brand new one, Bowie Clown. We've never done Bowie Clown before. Bowie Clown? Bowie Bowie clown? Bowie okay. That would scare me. There you go, Bowie Cloud. Every week we like to say goodbye to some folks who have passed away, who are no longer with us, who deserve a shout out, and uh, this week is no exception. They're called the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now, another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. This week, Russell Means passed away at the age of 72. For those who don't know, Russell Means was an American Indian rights activist. He was one of the leaders of the Wounded Knee Occupation. You remember that story? Mm-hmm. There, were, um, there were a group of American or Native Americans who uh, took over Wounded Knee, South Dakota, in a 71-day armed occupation demanding rights for Native Americans. And it was a big deal. He was an outspoken champion for American Indian rights. And then he launched a career as an actor in films and television in the 80s and 90s. He appeared in such films as The Last of the Mohicans, (laughs) naturally. Um, What? He was an Indian. I can say that. I'm like one-eighth Choctaw. Is that true? Nope. He was in Natural Born Killers. Okay. And he was the voice of uh, Powhatan in Disney's animated film Pocahontas. Right on, man. Passed away at the age of 71 this week. He was, uh, by all accounts, a great leader for his people, uh, did a lot to help Native American rights, and a really good actor, too. I remember him in Last of the Mohicans. He was really good. Big, so, big papoose full of wind. Right yes. There, man. May, may, the, may the sacred buffalo guide you across the native plains of the afterworld and take you to the big teepee in the sky. <laughs> That's all I got, man. I think it's like mainstream religions caught on more because the prayers are shorter and easier to remember. <laughs> yes. That was a really long one. It sounded uh, made up on the spot. There's an Indian theme in tonight's show because we've got a Hollywood helper tonight that also has to do with the Native Americans. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. My margaritas. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. Hollywood helper. Ah, ah, ah. Hollywood helper. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh-ah. Uh, uh, uh. Hollywood helper. Come on now. Hollywood, Hollywood helper. You're rolling your eyes at the Hollywood helper already. I'm not rolling my eyes. It's just, oh, it's, it's, it's very nice, but it's awfully, ti- it's timed awfully well, don't you think? Johnny Depp, who is actually part Cherokee, He's got a piece in him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he donated this week $25,000 to the Navajo Nation for college scholarships. Fantastic. So that more kids can go from the reservation, go to get uh, advanced learning, can go, uh, go on to college. That is actually really, really cool. $25,000 is a monetary gift given to the Navajo Nation, and it will be set aside and used for scholarships 
for Navajo children who want to go to college. $25,000, which I believe is what Johnny Depp pays for shoes. <laughs> I'm just saying, brother's got a lot of money. A lot of wampum, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm, he make many millions for Pirates Caribbean. And he gives 25K to the Navajos. I, I don't get it. Is he, are you saying he's a Hollywood helper or you're not saying? Well, he's a Hollywood. He's a Hollywood helper. He's a Hollywood helper. <laughs> no, it's more like this. He's a Hollywood helper. <laughs> yeah. That's the appropriate That's level. That's the level, yeah. 25K. I appreciate the gesture. I'm just saying, Johnny. It's all, yeah. He probably buys a bottle of wine with dinner that costs 25K. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, but still, 25 maybe it goes a long way on, on the reservation or something like that. Maybe that means... For one, one person. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> He's sending one kid to college. He will end up being Johnny Depp's personal assistant at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I mean, it doesn't have to be his personal assistant. It could be his young ward, his Robin. <laughs> it's, it's Lone Ranger and Tonto. You're mixing up your duos. That's true. Every week we look at something that happens in movies that simply should not be. In fact, we call it shit that should not be. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. The shit that should not be this week comes from the movie Dick Tracy. You guys remember Dick Tracy? It's coming out on uh, Blu-ray, actually. I believe I it is. I just ordered it on Amazon myself. Yeah. Beautiful movie. Dick Fenton Tracy before beautiful. he dicks you, I used to say. I don't know why I would say that, but I used to say that quite a bit. And then other people would say, avoid that man. <laughs> Warren Beatty stars as the legendary comic strip detective Dick Tracy. Which he wouldn't put on the nose was the only weird thing. Right, because you know in, that the, in the comics he had a big honking flat nose. very famous uh, profile. The nose kind of comes out like this, but he, everyone else wore makeup and shit like that to make him look like the characters from the comic strips, but all he would do was put on the outfit. He wouldn't put but on the But he had that bright lemon yellow hat and trench coat and stuff. Was, and I like that movie. It was that. a fun film. Yeah. Uh, there is, uh, here at, uh, at Hollywood Babylon, we think that there are many scenes in films that uh, remarkably get through all of the hundreds of people who have to look at a film before it gets released, and shit slips through the cracks, and this is one of those things. I always find it difficult to watch people genuinely getting hurt on film, even if it's even if it's a stuntman, for example, I think it's inappropriate to use that footage if someone genuinely gets hurt. Remember we did uh, uh, Dale, what's his name, Dale Mid Midkiff? Mid Mid Dale Midkiff in uh, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. He rolls out of bed in that scene and smashes his head on the nightstand. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's all fucked up, and they kept it in the film. I was like, that's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Warren Beatty's stuntman and Dick Tracy gets a face full of lamppost in the film. I don't know if you've ever seen this or not, but we brought the clip in. I never noticed it before, but uh, Malk from Kirkcaldy, Scotland, sent it in and said, this is wildly appropriate shit that should not be, and I think he's got a point. I brought the scene in for you. We're going to show you the scene, then we'll slow it down right afterwards. Watch the head of Warren Beatty's stuntman as he leaps from the ledge of a building onto a street light below. Go, oh, Sam, get him. Right here, watch this. Oh, oh come man. on. That looked like a fucking come on. hurt, man. <laughs> However, he held on to the street lamp. But every stunt person, man, I've ever worked with, if they get remotely hurt, they're always like, use that one, man. That's what I'm here for. So no doubt that dude was like, please use that take. The I guarantee you he didn't say that. <laughs> I, I almost, he said, I, <laughs> You just got kicked and someone wore my fucking jaw. Which translates to, why didn't you wear the fucking nose? If he had worn the nose, he might have hit the nose. <laughs> That's right. He had some padding instead of snapping his head back. Uh, every week we also look at some A-list actors who turn in less than A-level performances in a segment we call Exquisite Acting. To be or not to be. That is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. <laughs> exquisite acting this week. It is Halloween week. All the parties are tonight, the big Halloween parties. Uh, Halloween's coming up, but was it Tuesday, I think, this week? So it's only appropriate we look to a horror film for this week's exquisite acting. It's Friday the 13th, part four. Oh, that's the good one. <laughs> Every other one is really good. <laughs> The even number ones, That's right? right. The yeah. even number ones are great. Friday the 13th Part 4 stars a uh, desperately young Crispin Glover. 
and this email reads, I thought this might work for some exquisite acting. I thought it was impossible for anyone to dance worse than John, Von, John Claude Van Damme when he was an extra in Kickboxer. But Crispin Glover went and did it in Friday the 13th, part four. Please enjoy. This is from Matt Burton in London, England. In the film, uh, Crispin Glover shockingly is cast as a nerd in the film. <laughs> and he's trying desperately to come on to this girl at this house party before they all start getting mercilessly slaughtered. And uh, he wants to dance with her, so he puts on inappropriately fast dance music. And then I guess the director said, well, just dance like a nerd. Um, Crispin Glover took that and abused <laughs> the privilege. Here, here's your scene from Friday the 13th, part four, with Crispin Glover and some exquisite acting. Don't ask me to stay. Don't think you got it made <laughs> Because you're embarrassing yourself. That's why we turned it off. <laughs> Hideous. I like him, though, man. He's always interesting. He's always like, if the camera's on, I'm going to try to do something weird. I uh, can kick, man. Yes. Holy shit. That Remember Letterman? that? He yeah. kicked Letterman? Uh, my new uh, favorite, it's not new anymore. My favorite game that we play here on the show is called Kev In, where we take pictures of Kevin and drop him into wildly inappropriate situations <laughs> where Kevin would never be. You people are very good at some uh, Photoshop, I got to tell you. Let's take, it this, take a look at this week's Kev In. What's Kev In today? Something crazy or awesome or gay? And by gay we mean homosexual, like maybe some dudes, but what's Kev In? What's Kevin this week? Let's take a look. Monday night, of course, was the final Demo uh, Democratic and Republican debate between our two candidates for U.S. president. I did not policy. I watched it. Did you tune in? Boring. I think you did more than tune in. I should have watched because let's take a look at the photo there. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea that you participated. <laughs> had I known, I would have watched. You should have told me. And by the way, I'm writing you in for president Thank because you, I was man. very impressed. Thank you. I'm trying to low key it. <laughs> Look at you <laughs> looking at Barack like, oh, you silly black man. <laughs> if uh, ever there was a year I might be able to get elected, man. <laughs> this would be it. Holy shit. It's a dead heat. You could be the tiebreaker. It's crazy. And that all came from the first debate. Remember back in the first debate, the president was ahead by a large margin? Yeah, we, and you, we said on this show, oh, there's no way that uh, Barack can lose this election. It did. I mean, he didn't yet, but I mean, he let the dude catch up with yeah. that first fucking debate. So crazy. Uh, that was from Andrew H. Alan from Sydney, Australia wrote, I figured I'd do a Kev in where I made Kevin's boyhood dream come true, but this was, this was kind of cool. <laughs> Look at you carrying the cup on the ice. That's as, awesome. As if you did something. That is not my boyhood dream, though. That's my adult dream. My boyhood dream would have been me inside Carrie Fisher. Oh. <laughs> Luckily for all of us, we don't have a photo of that tonight. <laughs> and lastly, from uh, Wesley Etten from London, England, he wrote in, I have uh, sent in a Kevin featuring Kevin's greatest fear and his greatest movie, Jaws, because we know how you feel about sharks. And I looked at this picture and I said, <laughs> I said, I see this. I, this looks like just the poster to me. I don't get it. Where's Kevin? Can we just zoom in maybe on this section? There we go. That's the section we we're looking for. <laughs> Kevin that swimming is not just my above body, the man, for the record. I don't know. It looks awfully it's, sexy. It's not. There's a picture of me. I've, uh, people keep sending me the picture and they're like, is this you? I was wondering because you look pretty sexy. No, you? no, no. I wish. Believe me, that's the sad thing. I look at the picture all the time and I'm like, I wish I was that cut. It's, it's a big, beefy, hairy dude with his arms kind of over his head posing very er erotically. Yes. It, it, apparently the Photoshop is so good. Even my wife came into my office one day and was like, is this you? <laughs> Can we do this? <laughs> well, it's time to take a look at this week's showbiz headlines with a segment we call HBO Headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines. And give me head. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> This week's entertainment news headlines. Boy, we got a good batch this week. Uh, Justin Bieber is all over the news this week. All over the news. Why? He throwing up again? I did not throw up this week. 
But things got even worse for Justin because people are just fucking with him now. And, and I, for one, am all for that. I don't know if you saw it late this week. Uh, somebody, somebody genius went on Twitter and dummied up a tweet that looked like it was from the official Entertainment Tonight Twitter feed. This is what they put up there. Can we throw that up? Pop star Justin Bieber was diagnosed with cancer earlier this morning. Bieber fans are shaving their heads to show their support. No. The hashtag bald for Bieber quickly caught fire on Twitter. <laughs> oh, God. Now, there has been no official, no official documentation of any prepubescent girl shaving her head to support Justin Bieber. However, we just have to fucking hope, people. We just have to hope. Just, just, just please, God, just one of them do it. Just one. If one little girl shaves her head and goes into work the next morning... For, for, well, I saw some photos, but it looked like it was Photoshop saying bald for Bieber. But really? One of your friends did it? Was it a girl? Oh, that's awesome that somebody actually did it. So bald for Bieber became a thing before the hoax was exposed. Apparently, there had been rumors that some people actually did it. And I'm glad to hear, sir. Thank you for <laughs> confirming that some Bieber fan actually shaved their head. Is it a 4chan uh, stunt? It was a 4chan stunt, yeah. God bless them for the good yeah, work they that do they a do. Lot of, a lot of weird, wonderful stuff. Uh, also, and horrible stuff as well. Yeah, so yeah. Don't be wrong. And that's kind of horrible, but it's kind of funny because it's Justin Bieber. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, well, is it horrible? I mean, it's kind of... If you, if you shave your head and then the next morning found out that the whole thing was uh, was You've a learned a very important <laughs> lesson, Ralph. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's not. Uh, Justin also had a hard week because nude photos of his dad are being shopped around. <laughs> what? Apparently, <laughs> apparently when Jeremy Bieber was younger, he posed for an all-nude, erotic, male, full-frontal photo shoot. That was Selena Gomez, too, by the way. <laughs> that was the, the uh, all the girls from eighth grade are here tonight, man. Ew! Actually, Jeremy Bieber's a pretty good-looking guy. Have you ever seen pictures yeah, of him? Yeah, I've seen a picture of him. He's got a Billy Ray Cyrus kind of vibe to him. But he, he actually looks like he could kick all of our asses, so we should be careful. Yeah. Uh, they look like they were taken for a Playgirl-type magazine or something, says the source that was trying to sell the photos. What year from? Um, they say younger days, so I'm guessing... Before uh, Bieber? Pre-Bieber? No, probably... Uh, I got the, the, the gist of the story was probably about 10 years ago, it sounded like. I mean, the guy's not old. I don't think, right, he, no, I think no, maybe no. he's early 40s. So uh, apparently it was when he was in his prime. <laughs> We're not there yet, sir. <laughs> and uh, there is apparently some sort of bidding war going on, on the Internet for someone to publish the photos. Would someone really be interested in nude photos of Justin Bieber's dad? Fuck yeah, man. They're like, see where Justin Bieber used to live. <laughs> See these balls? <laughs> that used to be his home. <laughs> totally, man. And my favorite story of the week, we're getting out of the way early, it's another Bieber story. A man from Michigan has filed a lawsuit against Justin Bieber. Uh, this guy is fucking insane. But the lawsuit is hysterical. The man from Michigan, whose name has not been disclosed by the press, filed a lawsuit in Michigan this week saying that he was secretly... Um, What's his name? What's the name of the girlfriend he's going out with? Uh, Selena Gomez, Selena right? Gomez. Selena Gomez's dad. And the lawsuit reads as follows. Justin Bieber cost me $426.78 and never paid me back. This money was used as abortion money because Justin Bieber got my daughter, Selena, pregnant in my bedroom on my Canadian bear rug. <laughs> this is a legal document? That rocks. God bless America. Of course it's a Canadian bear rug because that's the sexiest kind. Totally. And very important, too. It continues. He's also suing Usher because, and I quote, Usher came to my house on the 4th of July, 2012, and sodomized me with a firework. <laughs> he lit it inside my anal area. Inside my anal area. This guy wrote his own document, as you can tell. While blaring Katy Perry's fireworks song in my ears. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to admit, that got me a little hard when I heard that. That's kind of sexy. 
He continues with his lawsuit. Justin Bieber gave Selena an STD, and then Bieber stole my credit card to buy himself and Sean P. Diddy Combs cocaine to use in drug-free school zones. <laughs> and lastly, Justin Bieber also got a penis enlargement with my stolen American Express card. He also alleges that Justin has been cheating on Selena Gomez with Kesha, Rihanna, and Penelope Cruz. Um, I wonder uh, how, if we can all jump in on this, make it a class action lawsuit. I would like to as well. I hope this guy wins. I'm pulling for him. This week was a big story. Uh, Reality show host Donald Trump was in the news. He promised a bombshell that would bust Obama campaign wide open. Have you heard this or not? Mm -hmm. When it finally was announced, it turned out to be more of an offer than a bombshell. He said he'll give $5 million to the charity of the president's choice if Obama would release his application information for his college and his passport. Why? That's, that's not he a, still wants to that's not news. see if he's uh, born here or something like that? that I think that's the It goes back to the birther shit? He wants to go back to see whether he's Kenyan or not, basically. Wow. Uh, people immediately mocked and derailed this, uh, this offer by Donald Trump, including many people on the right. Uh, but none better, in my opinion, than Stephen Colbert on the Cabell Report. We don't do this a lot here where we play other people's comedy bits, but this was so spectacular, I thought it was worth watching. Here is Stephen Colbert from his show that night after Trump made his offer of $5 million for the release of that information, and Colbert makes Donald Trump a counter offer. Here. Mr. Trump, I will write you a check for $1 million from Colbert's Super PAC. You know I've got it. <laughs> to the charity of your choice. Anything. Save the children, feed the children, put the children on child apprentice, whatever. (laughs) One million actual dollars if you will let me dip my balls in your mouth. No word yet from Donald Trump's office as to whether he will accept that offer or not. He's a fucking good businessman, a smart businessman. He might take him, man. He absolutely might. Uh, More politics and show business crossing paths this week. I don't know if you saw it or not, but legendary singer Meatloaf was campaigning for Mitt Romney this week. There was a Mitt Romney rally held in Defiance, Ohio. Mm -hmm. That's a place. It was Thursday, and Meatloaf was there along with uh, Big and Rich, the country stars, and uh, the lead singer for Alabama. It was just a redneck paradise is what it was. <laughs> and uh, Meatloaf was there, and he joined Romney on stage at the end of the rally, and everybody was singing America the Beautiful. And I brought in some audio and video of uh, Meatloaf singing America the Beautiful, only because this fucker sings for a living. That's what you need to remember as you watch the performance of Meatloaf singing America the Beautiful. He's going to join in a minute. Chris Farley came back to life. Wow. That guy used to have hit records. Let's just all take a moment. His name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> Thank you. I will do anything for love, but I won't sing on key. Apparently, is <laughs> the new lyric. More politics and celebrity crossing paths this week. Tila Tequila this week declared war on the Illuminati. That's right, you fucking Illuminati. You better run. For those of you who don't know, and maybe everyone does, maybe it's like IMDB, but the Illuminati is the secret shadow government that is running things throughout the world. They are the super rich, the super powerful. They are the, the, the puppet masters who are making all of the world's economies work. In X-Files parlance, they are the cigarette smoking man. That's right. Tila Tequila declared war on them this week in a rambling, pages-long open letter to the Illuminati, which just, it's just, I've got it all here, and I'm going to read it all. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to read you some highlights. Here's what Tequila said 
this week. We're all sick and tired of your shit. You want a war? Okay, let's get ready for one. But only if you participate yourself and not act like a bunch of old, ugly, rich, evil cowards. It is on, people. <laughs> I declare war, but no soldiers, just me, the people, and all of you so-called Illuminati elitist cowards. I have all your secrets. My Tila army and the world at large has you way outnumbered. There's a Tila army? <laughs> Garmy, take arms. Tomorrow we battle the Tila army. She went on to say, yeah, sure, we all know about your underground bunkers. What? <laughs> we do? Old news. But shall I tell the people about it, the entire city inside the hollow earth? <laughs> Fuck. Tila tequila. I want to hear about the city in hollow earth. <laughs> shall I tell people that you came here and left your own planet to infiltrate ours, and now some of you currently reside on the moon? Is she picking on the fucking Scientologists? <laughs> Shall I tell them that the so-called moon is actually where some of you still reside to watch over us? And the moon is actually your secret base? I gotta be honest with you, man. This sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tila. It sounds like Moonraker, man. <laughs> it does, actually. We liked it so much better when you were just a STD-riddled whore. Oh. We did like it better, didn't we? No, I didn't know she was that. No, oh, she was. <laughs> uh, more fascinating news. The father and mother of Jessica and Ashley Simpson this week have announced they're splitting up. This is fucked up. <laughs> Keep going. Are you upset because the Simpsons are splitting? I'm not upset, but this story caught my attention today, and I fell down the rabbit hole reading Jeez, I wonder why. This. It's so bizarre. Joe right? Simpson, the manager of Jessica and Ashley, have, he has called quits his marriage with his wife, Tina, after 34 years of wedded bliss. Sad. Sad when a relationship falls apart, Ralph, especially after that many years. Decades together. The kids are grown. They're on their own. Fair okay. enough. So they could. Maybe they are ready to take a chance again, go forward, have separate relationships. Uh, in Texas, they filed paperwork and said the reason for the split was discord or conflict of personalities. Sometimes that happens. People just can't get along, Ralph. You know, it's not a big deal. Sometimes personalities conflict, and that's it. And I hear you. You've got to go your separate way. A, uh, a, uh, a more significant reason may be that Joe Simpson is actually gay. <laughs> How could that be, Ralph? He's been married to a woman for 34 years. The former Baptist minister... That explains a few things. Reportedly brought his family together a few months ago and officially came out of the closet to them. And the split, by all accounts, is amicable between himself and Tina, and they're going their separate ways. Now, I do not know if this is true or not. This is largely speculation on part of the media. However, this week, Joe Simpson was seen walking down the street in a fabulous canary yellow sweater with matching shoes. And he had highlights in his hair, and he looked... Happier than I've ever seen. The weirdest part of the story that I read about was the dude that he's potentially hooked up with and seeing is a 21-year-old dude who was a dancer, not for Jessica Simpson, but for Britney Spears. Yeah. Isn't that weird? You know what this makes me feel good about, though, is Joe Simpson for years was talking about how hot his daughter was and how nice her boobs were. He would talk about his wife, Je his, his daughter, Jessica Simpson, saying, her boobs are just fantastic, aren't they? And I would say, oh, that's so creepy. But now that I know that he wasn't really attracted to boobs, it makes it Not much so better creepy. for me. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> More observational. Bobby Brown got in trouble this week. <gasps> <laughs> I did that for you. Uh, Bobby Brown was nabbed for drunk driving again this week. He was uh, pulled over and booked on a DUI. It was Bobby's second bust for DUI this year. Back in March, he pled no contest and checked himself into rehab, but apparently it didn't stick because he was pulled over after drinking and driving yet again. It's his prerogative. <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> While we're talking about shitty drivers, Lindsay Lohan's in the news this week. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to Oh, Lindsay. Good news for Lindsay this week. The Manhattan DA let her off the hook for those hit and run charges outside that hotel. Remember when she supposedly ran into that guy when she was pulling into the hotel parking lot? 
They looked at the security footage and they said it was not proof positive that she in fact tagged that guy in the knee. And so they are letting her off the hook. There no child, no charges will be filed. She's free to go. Right on, man. Good for her. Yeah, just the minute she gets out of her own fucking way, <laughs> the low hand giveth, the Lord low hand taketh away. <laughs> This week, it was announced that apparently she helped herself to a new wardrobe thanks to the people at Scary Movie 5, where she was filming that show. Um, close, uh, sources close to the set say she stole $15,000 worth of clothing from the set. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Is she 27 yet? Why? Was something foretold in the Bible? When the fire crotch becometh 27, <laughs> the earth shall split open. Baptist ministers shall turn gay and sucketh the cock. And the nude Bieber father shall be appearing. When will this happen, father? When the big hand passes the low hand. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, that was good. That man. was good, that was good. <laughs> That's like an 80-20. Yeah, if you're split, it's not a file, so go fuck yeah, yourselves. Yeah, if you didn't... <laughs> Battled out in the parking lot. Thank you for the woo. That was like a Frasier joke, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes, Niles. That was good, dude. Thank you. The I only thing I do is Frasier. Frasier. That's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, she was on the set of Scary Movie 5. Her career's on the upswing. <laughs> And she helped herself to $15,000 worth of wardrobe, put it in her trunk, and drove off the set, apparently. That's what happened. It's so weird. I, I, don't, I think I have maybe $400 worth of wardrobe. I can't imagine what $15,000 looks like. Wouldn't somebody notice that? Like, they did. She's got a shit ton of clothes. It says here, producers believe that's simply the price of doing business with Lohan. So they're just like, turn, turn the other way, let her go. It's a write-off, I guess. Get out of here. So Lohan's like, you didn't see nothing. This fell off a truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Lindsay Mafia. <laughs> no, apparently they think it's not worth pursuing legally, so they're just going to let her go. Wow. All right, that's maybe. the magic of movies. That's why movies cost $50 million to make. Is because they're that or shit maybe off. she was like one of these cats. It's like, hey, man, I'll do, like, I think she's in one scene, like the opening scene or something. So maybe she didn't get much cash, but she's like, I want all my wardrobe. And so she ordered up a bunch of wardrobe. And or she maybe she got airtight for clothing. <laughs> no. No, you're right. She does that for blow. My bad. Shannon Doherty, dude, on Mallrats, she written into her contract that she got to keep all her wardrobe. Really? And there was this one jacket that I guess she picked out all her wardrobe, but I didn't go with them when they went to put together the outfits and stuff. Her and the costumer and whatnot. But there was this one jacket that she had on. I was trying to get this jacket from, I was a big fan of uh, Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get a jacket that I'd seen on the show from Degrassi that says Degrassi High on Degrassi Junior High. I thought that'd be cool. Um, couldn't get one and shit. So I said to the costume person, I was like, do me a favor, man. Shannon's jacket, the one she's walking around with Ben in this scene, like stitch in the back Degrassi High or Degrassi Junior High. As an homage. Like As an homage. And I remember the, the wardrobe lady was just like, are you sure you want to do that? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, man, go ahead. Like, it's going to look awesome in the movie. It's a little in-joke. It's a little shout-out to a show that I like. So we go and shoot the fucking scene that day and shit. Shannon comes smoking up to me, and she goes, What the fuck is Degrassi High? <laughs> and I was just like, Degrassi High, man. It was a Canadian TV show that uh, actually 90210 was kind of ripped off of. She's like, Why is it stitched into my jacket? And I was like, well, it's stitched into the character's jacket. She's like, Kevin, I get to keep all my wardrobe. Oh. And I was so like, was yeah, but stuff. after we use it first. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, can they take this out? I was like, sure. And then I talked to the costume lady. I was like, can you take it out? She goes, fuck no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's permanent as fuck, man. That's awesome. Uh, more annoying actresses in the news. Uh, Kristen Stewart is back to get... What? Hey. Where's the Twihard? Get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can stay. Isn't it amazing that some vampires just don't sparkle? <laughs> I never see the sun. You've seen what? I have. I went to two Twilight premieres. I got a kid. Both times I took my kid when she was way into, you know. Fucking... Don't you have people for that? You don't have to go. <laughs> No, that's the magic. That's the, and now she's like 13, and you couldn't fucking drag her there. You know, if I was just like, hey, man, let's go to the fucking last psst, Twilight premiere. Psst. I could take her. Yeah. Totally, totally. You could come and play some my kid. 
Do you hear right, that, lady? So a 13-year-old won't go to those movies anymore. <laughs> That's just because she's a little something for you to mull over in the no, drive home. Oh, she's passed into a stage where she's just like, you know, fucking wearing she's too dark. cool for school. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that's all. Uh, Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson apparently are back together again. Thank God. Timing of this is awfully suspicious, don't How you? How dare you, sir? You think just because the movie's going to come out in a couple months, they have to get back together again? I was kind of honestly, I mean, look, I'm not invested in this fucking relationship, and I don't stalk it and watch it like the magazines do, but I'll be honest with you. I was kind of looking forward to seeing how they were going to promote the movie while fucking They're being separate. split up. Yeah, man. That'd be cool. fucking, that would be fun to watch. Sources say that uh, our Pats has put down a list of requirements that Case do has to comply with in order to make their relationship work. Now they're back together again. <laughs> Number one, no cocks in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it says right here, no strange cock. That's number one on the list. Uh, individual and couples counseling that she has to pay for. She must go to mandatory individual and couples counseling that Wait, she has who, to pay and, and for. And he sat her down and he's like, you got to go to counseling and you got to pay for it. This is the list. They're, these two both are like stinking rich from these movies, man. They're quibbling over the fucking therapy bill. You don't know how expensive this therapist is. He's oh. a werewolf therapist. <laughs> they I've have seen. to wait like once a month when the moon comes full <laughs> and then they can only do it raw. <laughs> uh, she has to ditch all her male friends. All of them. No male friends. Oh, now I won't be hanging out with Kay Stu anymore. Yeah. She has to quit hanging out with all her single girlfriends who are out on the prowl at clubs here in Hollywood. The sluts. Or the sluts, <laughs> for another. She must cut contact. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Whores! And that was a dude. Is that what you said? Was that a guy? Yeah. No, that no, was a girl, right? right? She must cut contact Whores! with all ex-boyfriends. All ex-boyfriends. No more ex-boyfriend contact. That's fair enough, man. Like, you know, it's it, when trying to move on with a new relationship, maybe you don't want to uh, talk to the ex-boyfriend so much. But these two, he is the ex-boyfriend, so how the fuck are they going to have a relationship? <laughs> I mean other ex-boyfriends, I oh, think. Oh, I see, I see. And my favorite one, the last one, is she must undergo a lie detector test. Get the fuck out of That's here. That's what it says here. That's bullshit, man. My first question is, are you a shitty actress? <laughs> no. <laughs> aren't like they're not fucking even really admissible in court in most cases why why the fuck would you they're admissible in love <laughs> if you don't trust the pussy don't fuck the pussy taylor swift is single again i'm sorry tadoff switler is single again tadoff switler before annexing prussia and austria <laughs> And invading Poland has decided to become single. That evil bitch broke up with the 18-year-old high school guy she was fucking, Connor Kennedy. She just wanted to be with a Kennedy. Wasn't it? I remember we did a story where she went to the wedding, somebody's wedding, she, and she the mom was a like, Kennedy please wedding. don't go. And yes. She came anyway. She's uh, 22 years old. She was dating an 18-year-old Kennedy named Connor Kennedy. Now, here's the, my favorite part of the story. Apparently, he, she wanted too much from the relationship, and he was uncomfortable, and he broke it off with her. He's 18, he's fucking a 22-year-old? Yes. Those Kennedys are so lucky. And he's mature enough to know that she's out of her fucking head. That's what my favorite part is. He's like, you know what? I'm 18, but you're fucking insane. So I would never, ever, ever, ever get back together with you. The bad news is there is a song coming with his name on it that's going to embarrass that kid. Uh, even weirder, she bought a mansion right next to the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport. So he's going to be seeing a lot of her one way or the other. Oh, shit, man. I hope he doesn't have any rabbits. <laughs> In TV news, Spike TV has announced their brand new reality show, The $10 Million Bigfoot Bounty. Enough of this pussy footing around. They are offering a $10 million cash prize to anyone who can present actual proof that Bigfoot exists. <laughs> if you had a Bigfoot dips his balls in your mouth, yes, you, you get the money. There will be various teams of scientists, zoologists, and Bigfoot hunters who will try to locate Sasquatch and win the $10 million prize. In a related story, Khloe Kardashian is nowhere to be found. She is hiding out in the family compound, scared for her life. Another lawsuit, another celebrity, Megan Fox is suing. I don't suing. know how the fuck I didn't see that coming, man. 
I was getting ready to go off. I'm like, do you think they'll find a big Bigfoot around? It's the only reason that that I page know. is in the in the in the binder you would think here. After two years, I'd see it coming, but that snuck up on me. Megan Fox is suing a website called Celeb Jihad. It is a parody website. They are known as the only celebrity gossip website run by Islamic extremists. <laughs> <laughs> They're a fun. It's a funny website. Yeah, it's That's parody. It's a parody site. They posted a photo of her head on another person's naked body to uh, make fun of the fact, uh, supposedly, that she lost all of her baby weight immediately upon losing the baby. That was the gist of the comedy. Wait, 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 what? What happened? Did she have a baby? Yes, yeah. Okay, but you just said she lost the baby weight after losing the baby, and I was like... Did oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant after having the baby, not after losing the baby. That wouldn't be so funny. That wouldn't be nearly as funny. <laughs> Two very different terms. <laughs> yes. She lost all the weight after having, having the, the baby, baby. Okay. three all weeks right, later. Right. Uh, the joke was, because it's supposedly a site run by Islamic extremists, they said, of course, uh, Muslim women have much tighter bodies than Megan Fox, Fox just hours after giving birth. This is due to the fact that Muslim women are till the fields and only take a short break to squat behind a boulder, <laughs> deliver the baby, and they get right back to work. See, it's a spoof. Totally. This is the photo, by the way, that they put up of her. This is not Megan Fox. This is another woman's body with her head on it. Clearly, too. But which I say, good job, Celeb Jihad. <laughs> she is furious with the photo, and she is suing them. To which the website responded, while we appreciate Megan Fox's concern for her image, we find it hard to believe that a woman who spent two Transformers movies bent over with her breasts pressed together could have her reputation damaged by a blatantly satirical website. <laughs> good for them. Good for them for not buckling. More news about websites and whores. Christina Aguilera has been a, got a uh, job offer this week. She has been offered a job to endorse a dating website for big girls called TheBigAndTheBeautiful.com. Christina has been very vocal about how happy she is with her new plumper body. Mm. They are offering her $3 million if she'll do a commercial for uh, television, one for radio, two photo shoots, four public appearances, and pays... Uh, she'll get paid $3 million for just that to promote TheBigAndTheBeautiful.com, a plus-size dating site for women. If she says no, I'll happily do it. I'll put on a fucking wig and be like, look at my tits. Big ladies are awesome. In the photo shoots, however, they asked, asked that she be poured, uh, had gravy poured over and put an apple in her mouth. <laughs> that would have been so much funnier if I could have said it out loud. In movie news, are you ready for a black James Bond? You think that could ever happen? Yes, I, hope, I was really hoping for Black Batman, but I'll take Black James Bond as well. Apparently, Idris Elba has met with the Bond producers. He should be fucking Black Batman, Idris Elba, man. He's a badass. He's a fantastic guy. Yeah, but he is a Brit. He's got the accent built in. Uh, Daniel Craig has two more movies after Scott. This uh, is for after. reals? This isn't just like no. a Bond-like? He, actually... he met with Barbara Broccoli and, uh, and Michael G. Wilson, the producing partners of the Bond series. Uh, apparently there's two more that Daniel Craig has signed on for, but they're already thinking ahead, and they're just having preliminary conversations with Idris Elba about maybe taking over Bond, maybe a black Bond. That'd be amazing. They'll probably let him do one movie and then try to replace him with some <laughs> fucking robot. <laughs> I say we'll see a black president before we see a black Bond. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's a good idea, though, man. Why not? Like, once Daniel Craig's done, you got to, like, ignite it with some kind of interest and... That would be a way to do it. He's right a badass, too. If you ever watch Luther or, the, yes. or any of the shows that he's and in. And The I mean, Wire. He's a brilliant well. actor, and he's very, very talented. Stringer Bell on The Wire, man. He's I bet, he, I bet he's actor. hung like a monster, too. <laughs> he's got a big dick? I'm guessing. Oh, you're just fucking taking a guess. I'm hoping. I thought you had some inside info and shit. The inside track on no, big Hollywood just, dick. Just hoping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're doing just fine down here without the... Well, I we're talking about movies... And by the way, I saw Skyfall. I don't have time here, but we'll talk about it next week. But I saw Skyfall. Good or bad? It's fucking awesome. You guys are going to love it. I said good or bad. It's good. Uh, Let's talk about some movies that aren't good. In fact, let's talk about some movies that will suck. Brockheimer, Schumacher, Michael Bay. They make movies that make you say, Oh my God, that's bullshit. What the fuck? They're movies that will suck. (laughs) Tom Cruise's next film is a very adventurous, very original sci-fi adventure in which he will play a man who travels back in time to confront the younger version of himself. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's tentatively called Our Name is Adam. Hmm. 
Sounds super. Or rather, looper. Or gooper. Not that Tom Cruise is gay. I would I'd like to see that fucking movie, man. A movie where it's just like, they send you back in time to come in your own face. <laughs> Gooper. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because you signed a contract. <laughs> Don't move. Stand here. <laughs> Gooper. Schwang. <laughs> If you could go back in time. I would totally come in my own face. <laughs> oh, in a heartbeat, just to fuck with me, man. Just to get me shit to talk about with my friends. Like some fat stranger in a hockey jersey broke into my room and came in my face. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. Man. One day you're going to understand this, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> no, but seriously. Yes. If, if you had any sort of by curiosity whatsoever. Yes. That'd be the way to do it, right? Go back and suck yourself off. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Because it's not really gay if it's you. No. It's like if I jerk off, it's not like I'm jerking some other dude off. It's not really gay because it's me. Straight up, it's the pass. It's a gay pass. Right. So if I show up and I want to fuck around with myself, I'm good, right? Absolutely, man. You take it straight in the mouth, up the ass, and the <laughs> fucking armpit. And you can let people watch, man. Your parents could be there. And Will it would you stop? <laughs> All that could happen. And even Jesus himself could be standing by and he would say, it's not gay, it's himself. You lost me at armpit. <laughs> Just saying. I have, man. I've spent a lot of time fucking thinking about what happens if it's we It's not get... a stranger. It's me. It's the stranger. That's right. Yeah, when you sit on your hand until it's numb and then you jerk yourself off, feeling like it's somebody else. I've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. We all have. That's like, but that was in a pre-fleshlight world. You don't need that now. When, now we can stick our dicks in things, man. <laughs> Back then, we were like, I guess if I just knock my hand out, perhaps this will feel a little different. But now it's like, I'm coming in a rubber sleeve. That's oh. sexy. <laughs> uh, there's a new movie also that will suck in the works about a, uh, an aging rock star who receives a letter that was meant for him by John Lennon years after it was originally sent, and it changes his life, makes him want to get back together with his 40-year-old son and perform the kind of music that he truly wants to perform. That all sounds good, I guess. And, uh, once again, here's one the premise. More, one more time. There's an aging rock star from the 70s who's still out there performing his hits and banging groupies and stuff, but he's an old man. He's in his 60s now. He receives a letter that he was supposed to get when he was younger from John Lennon, who wrote him a letter. It was delivered 20 years after the fact. Mm. He gets it, and it changes his life. It makes him want to perform the music that he really feels and also reestablish a relationship with his now 40-year-old son. Okay. It sounds like it's a promising film, maybe as an indie. What bothers me is the fact that Al Pacino is going to play the rock star. Oh. I wonder what that would sound like. I can't... I can't take two hours of Al Pacino singing rock and roll on a stage with long hair and, like, Derek Smalls from Spinal Tap uh, Mutton Chops. Ooh, ah. Oh. I want to rock and roll all night. I party every day. Ooh, ah. Ooh. Sympathy for the devil. Ooh, ah. Look, we all saw him singing and dancing in that fucking cappuccino commercial in that Adam Sandler movie. We, we don't need Adam Sa We don't need uh, Al Pacino singing or dancing anymore. Fair enough. And while we're talking about fucking Adam Sandler, he announced this oh, week... Oh, I think about fucking Adam Sandler all the time. No, 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 no. He announced this week his next film is going to be a parody of westerns, specifically The Magnificent Seven, called The Ridiculous Six. Adam said he's going to star in it, he's going to produce it, and he's going to write it. He is a triple fuck, is what he is. <laughs> David Spade... 
will be one of the cowboys. Oh, it's, it's a team Je- movie. Kevin James. Everybody from uh, Grown Ups is going to uh, saddle up, and they're all you know going to play man? cowboys. Like, I mean, it's not for me, but good for him. He keeps his friends close and employed and shit like but that. But he's fucking awful. <laughs> he's fucking awful. Yeah, just somebody's going to find that funny, man. No one will find that funny. Somebody's look, somebody found fucking grown ups funny enough for them to be like, let's do it right. again. Let's look at the big let's look at the big graph of okay. funny from from grown ups to uh, Jack and Jill to that's my boy to ridiculous six. At what point is he just blowing guys behind a 7-Eleven for beer money <laughs> when he makes cop out? <laughs> I always think when I think Adam Sandler and these horrible fucking films he makes about that. Remember that short uh, segment of clips they did at the Oscars last year where they talked about films and what it means to you and Adam Sandler got all high and mighty and talked about his art when he was making movies? I'm glad you asked because I brought it in. (laughs) I'm eventually trying to one day tell the truth. I don't know if I'm ever going to get there, but... I'm slowly letting pieces of myself out there, and then maybe by the time I'm 85, I'll look back and say, all right, that about summed it up. Yeah. Yeah, you're a fucking artist is what you are. (laughs) You have told the truth in your films, Adam Sandler. The truth is, you're not fucking funny. That's the truth. (laughs) Shut up, he's not. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm a sister, and I'm also the brother. For fuck's sake. That's some funny shit right there, man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Movie. My sister's so ugly, but oh, ho, ho, ho. It makes me smile, man. I don't know what to tell you. All right, let's get into the geek news. Kevin and I are geeks. We love the geek news. Rough and Kevin, rough and Kevin, rough and Kev. Clark Kent quit the Daily Planet this week. I heard. Yeah, apparently Clark Kent uh, was fed up with the state of germ- journalism, so he quit his job at the Daily Planet. Uh, says Clark Kent, he said, I quit. He apparently is going to start a website, like the Drudge Report or the Huffington Post. Uh, to be fair, he has, in, in the DC Universe before, quit the, the Daily Planet. This ain't the first time. Yeah, I know, but this is fucked up. He's, he's Clark Kent. He's Superman. Yeah. Just work your job, Superman. Look, by the way, it's not even your fucking job. Your fucking job is saving the planet from aliens and shit, okay? It's stopping Lex Luthor and stuff. This is just your cover. This is just, this is just you with glasses on and a suit. So if being Superman is his job and being Clark Kent is just kind of like his off time, get off his fucking nuts. <laughs> Let him do what he wants and his off time. Man. All right, my bad. Another day, another video game turned into a movie. Assassin's Creed has been announced for those of you who play video games. The exciting news is that Michael Fassbender has been tapped as the star of that film. That should be pretty cool. More like fucking Assassin's Cleave, man. Because fucking got that fucking flesh cleaver between his legs. cheating on Liam Neeson. He's huge, Michael Fassbender. See shame. It's now available like everywhere, man. Pop it in. You know what? Watch the first five minutes. Ladies, you ain't going to get past the first five minutes. Because as soon as he walks out, you see it fucking his fast bender dangling and shit. You're just going to be like. Stop it. Faster, faster, fast bender. See what you've done? That's the one that's underwater. There's a new Kickstarter campaign to help drive the development of the movie based on the comic book The Goon, which has been going around for a while. Eric Powell, the creator of the comic book. It's a great comic, by the way. If you haven't read it, it's just hilarious and really clever. Uh, he's been working with David Fincher, legendary movie director David Fincher, trying to develop this, and they've got it all together. Uh, Paul Giamatti has agreed to play Frankie in the thing. Clancy Brown is going to voice The Goon. They're just trying to make it happen, but they can't get it greenlit because no studio will green light a PG-13 animated film. It has right. to be for kids or else they won't make it. Right. So they started a Kickstarter campaign to raise enough money to do a feature-length, what they call a uh, story reel, which is basically storyboards strung together with voices and sound effects to give the studios an idea of what this actually will turn out to be at the end. The reason I caught on to it is because someone's in the video that uh, they're using to try to raise money for the Kickstarter campaign, and it's awesome. If you're a Goon fan, here's a little taste of those guys playing those characters from the Kickstarter campaign. 
No, oh, that's the Iron Man trailer. Are we out of sequence? Here we go. Step right up and become a part of movie history. We're sending Goon to Hollywood, and we'd like to keep his clothes on. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Congratulations! You just became an executive producer. Good stuff. Cool. We got a little Iron tease Man there. Trailer. The Iron Man trailer came out this week. Fucking, it sure did. It came chance. out and I came all over, man. It, it was, it's phenomenal. I watched it 18 times on day one. So good. 18 times? In a row, man. It's so fucking good. The f when the, f spoilers if you haven't seen it, when the fucking mansion goes down the hill. Oh, it's so fucking amazing. A lot yeah, of when you find see, uh, you see the Mandarin. Ben Kingsley, he has the Mandarin for the first and time. And hearing his voice, I thought was cool. Like he chose a cool voice for it. You know, like not an obvious choice or something. He's not like, well, I am man. <laughs> Oh, so Iron Man, we will take you from a superhero. <laughs> he could have sounded like that. Yeah, he could have. That's the choice God. I would have made. <laughs> That's why you're not playing. Oh, playing. look how many rings I have on my finger. <laughs> oh, I am Mandarin. <laughs> it's Mandarin, dude, not Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Here's a little taste of the Iron Man 3 trailer if you missed it this week. It, by the way, 11 million hits on the very first day it came out. It, Most of those were Kevin. It deserves it and wish you had over and over. It is uh, not just uh, Robert Downey Jr. coming back and everybody who was involved with the previous two. Um, this time around, John Favreau is not directing, but it's directed by Shane Black, the yeah. guy that wrote The Lethal Weapons. And I don't know if you saw Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, but that was a phenomenal fuck. If you haven't seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, man, go check it out tonight or this weekend. It's Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer, um, what's her name, Michelle Monaghan, I think is the actress. Phenomenally funny fucking uh, L.A. detective story that's like just Robert Downey Jr., as a charm factory. So anyway, I guess he brought uh, Shane Black into Iron Man 3, and the trailer's just fucking phenomenal. A lot of people were speculating whether he could handle something of this scope and size, but it looks like Come from on, the trailer he that he did. Oh, big time, yeah. big time. Here's a little piece of the trailer from Iron Man 3. Ladies. Children. Sheep. Some people call me a terrorist. I consider myself a teacher. Lesson number one. Heroes. There is no such thing. Empire Strikes Back vibe about it, like yeah. real, like there's some shit, some stakes and whatnot. Yeah, I'd make a prediction. I don't think Pepper Potts comes out of it alive. Really? Oh fuck yeah! That's the vibe I get off of that. Finally, trailer. another movie that kills off Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, stop it. It. Stop it. She's adorable as Pepper Potts. That's why man. I watch that fucking virus movie over and over <laughs> again, just to watch her. <laughs> just to watch her fucking Total Recall out and just disappear. <laughs> I'm rooting for Matt Damon. Yes, hope she fucking dies on you. That movie was fucked up in as much as, like, she she does spoilers if you haven't seen, what's it called? Contagion? Yeah, she dies early in the movie, gets sick and dies early in the movie. Yeah. But you find out she cheated on Matt Damon in the movie. I know. Who the fuck cheats on Matt Damon, man? <laughs> Not me. Right? What? Ben Affleck. <laughs> Good point. Affleck yeah, did yeah. cheat on him, yeah. That movie would have been a lot more interesting if Ben Affleck was Matt Damon's <laughs> husband. Yes. He dies in the beginning. You find out he's cheating with Gwyneth Paltrow. That's right. And Matt's got to raise his child by himself with George Carlin as his dad. <laughs> hey. We always like to say goodnight by asking a very famous musical question by now based on Kevin's obsession with a certain Irish actor's penis. Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam Neeson's cock. 
Liam Neeson's cock, of course. You can go to neesoncock.com to add your own fact about the size of Liam's cock. Somebody on Twitter last week was like, you guys got to stop doing this bit. It's getting old. I say horse shit, man. This is my... Me too. Oh, Fuck you. This is a victory lap for the show. By That's the time right. we get here, we're like, ah, we put it into fucking second gear and cruise and around And people the keep track. writing funny stuff. They do. As long yeah. as they keep writing it, we'll keep reading it. Here is the, uh, the week's top facts about the size of Liam Neeson's cock. Liam Neeson's cock is so big... <laughs> That when God has sex, he yells, oh, Liam Neeson's cock. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When he makes snow angels, it looks like the angel is sitting on top of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It refused Vito Corleone's offer. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that one way or another, it's going to find you. It's going to get you, get you, get you, get you. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? he had to outsource its cleaning operations to Bangladesh. <laughs> That's a shame to lose U.S. jobs for totally, that. Totally. We could really use them now. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How they have worked out a Vegas act where Liam drinks water and his cock sings Blue Moon. <laughs> Ventriloquism's very big in Vegas. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Detectives have found the remains of Jimmy Hoffa, Amelia Earhart, and Cuba Gooding Jr.'s career hidden in his urethra. <laughs> Poor Cuba. That is so fucking mean, man. He did that gay boat movie in, in, in all defense. Yeah, but he was in Snow Dogs, too. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. Show me the money indeed, Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Any naked photo of him just looks like the photographer had their finger over the lens. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. That for Halloween, he's painting it green so that it can go to a party as the Loch Ness Monster eating a watermelon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, did you have a good time this evening? Thank you so very much for making your way out here and joining us tonight. Thank you for selling us out again. If you want to stick around at 10 o'clock, Ralph Garman's going to read comic books, man. We do uh, Hollywood Babylon Comic Con Theater coming up next at 10 o'clock. It's a good time. He literally reads every voice in the book as a different character and stuff. We've done two times before. We're going to do it for the third and final time for the Batman story cacophony that I wrote happening right now uh, after we cleared a place. You out. keep looking. You don't have a watch there. Stop looking. There's I do. No I'm just so used to doing that. It's such an old habit to break, man. I also do this a lot when I don't. <laughs> that's another old habit <laughs> yeah, to break. Yeah, totally hard to break. But anyway, if you want to stick around and watch that show, that's at 10 o'clock. But if you don't, man, I can't thank you enough for coming out tonight. It's always a great feeling when it's we good come to be here home. to see a bunch of people, man. A wall of humanity at Hollywood Babylon. And that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off. Good night, everybody. Thank you, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Hollywood Babylon, live at the Lovitz.